Hi everyone, Heather here with Astrology with Heather.com and I am back with another special video. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to DIY your very own birth chart reading. And so in this video, we're going to be covering how to generate a birth chart and how to interpret a birth chart for yourself in a way that's very simple and easy to understand. This video is perfect for true beginners as well as astrologers or astrology students who are just starting to dabble in astrology but don't quite understand how to do actual interpretations or don't understand the symbolism involved in the chart itself because that can get quite complex. And so for the purpose of this video and for the purpose of the DIY birth chart interpretation that you're going to be doing here, you're going to need three things. First and foremost, you're going to need your birth chart, right? <laughs> and so I'm going to be showing you how to generate your birth chart, but before we do that, you're going to need the exact date, the exact time, and the exact location of your birth. And so by exact time, I actually mean exact time. So you're going to need to dive into your birth certificate, ask some friends and family members who are maybe present at the time of your birth, or maybe even call the county or the hospital where you were born because sometimes you can request a long form birth certificate. Make sure it's a long form because that's going to include the time. So you can get an accurate astrological interpretation and so you can give yourself an accurate birth chart reading. Second, you're going to need to download my free PDF all about the astrological glyphs and symbolism in the birth chart so you can decode all of these squiggles and lines and different things that you'll see when you pull up your birth chart. And so that glyphs and symbols key, it's going to look just like this, what you see right here on your screen, and that's a free download. The link to find that is down in the description below. And then finally, you're going to need some sort of reference guide. And so I highly recommend investing in either a used or a new copy of an astrological text or a reference book that is geared for beginners who are looking to do natal chart interpretations, who are looking to um, do their own birth chart readings. And so my top pick for this is going to be the only astrology book you'll ever need by Joanne Wolfel. And I'm going to show you that right here. And so this book was the book that I actually started with. It was my very first astrology book. And I personally used this book to pick apart my own chart when I was first learning how to decipher, you know, what was going on in my natal chart and all of that. And so this book is kind of a cookbook astrology book where it gives you um, all of the different configurations and all of the different um, combinations of the planets in the signs, in the houses, and aspects that you could possibly have so you can get a sort of baseline interpretation for these different um, configurations and these different things that are going to be showing up in your chart once you dive into the actual chart itself and once you figure out what all of the glyphs mean, which we'll be teaching you how to do in this video. And so um, if you don't want to dive in and purchase an astrology book, although I highly recommend that you get um, this or a different beginner's reference guide because that's going to be very helpful so you can just flip through very easily and figure out your planet signs and houses, there are some um, reputable resources online for doing this. And I'll post a few more links down in the description below if I can find some other resources that might be really good for that. Don't just Google search it though because some of the resources that are going to come up are not going to be good and are not going to be accurate. There's a lot of nonsense on the internet right now when it comes to astrology. And a lot of these things that people write about or post online, they don't actually work when you're interpreting the birth chart. Um, and so, you know, you have to kind of go with resources that you know are going to be accurate and you know that have been proven. And so that book that I told you about, that's one of those resources. But, you know, I definitely recommend recommend investing in some sort of guide or resource that you can actually get all of the different interpretations from. And if you want to go even deeper, I do have a foundational astrology video course that is still available right now. Um, you can find the link for that down in the description below. And I'm also in the process of creating a bigger, more in-depth, longer form astrology course to take you from beginner to intermediate or even advanced astrology. So that way you can really understand how to, how to read birth charts, how to actually interpret natal charts, and even get into things like transits a little bit. So 
Um, that's going to be available hopefully in the spring of this year. There's a wait list on the page for the foundational astrology course for those of you who are interested in that. Moving into the birth chart, I'm going to be using a free software on astro.com. This is the primary software that I still use today. I have plenty of paid softwares that I also look into and utilize for astrological readings for my clients and for my friends and family. But um, I always go back to astro.com. It's very user-friendly. It has everything you could possibly need. And um, even if you're an intermediate or an advanced astrologer, you can definitely utilize astro.com as a really good resource and tool for generating charts. And so the first thing you want to do, obviously, is type in <laughs> astro.com into your browser. <laughs> then from there, you're going to see a tab that says free horoscopes. From there, I want you to click on extended chart selection. So don't just go right to natal chart ascendant, go to extended chart selection. If you don't already have an account, you're going to be asked to create one or to log in as a guest. From there, you're going to want to click add new person when you get to the extended chart selection. And so um, you're going to want to type in your name and click your gender, male or female, and then type in your birth date, your birth hour and minute, and then your birth location. Okay. And then from there, click continue. And then there are a couple of different options here for house systems. I recommend not using the default and jumping to whole sign houses if that feels good to you. If you're somebody who's already using Placidus or who wants to use Placidus, that's going to be the other most common house system to utilize. Uh, but for the purpose of this video and this tutorial, we're going to be using whole sign houses. And then from there, all you have to do is click here to show your chart. And from there, you're going to have a chart that's generated that looks just like this. And then from there, you're going to want to pull up the um, signs and glyphs PDF that you downloaded from my website at the link down in the description below. And so now that you have your um, glyphs PDF printed out or pulled up, and now that you have actually the chart pulled up, I'm going to explain to you what it is that you're looking at here. And so the reason I want you to download this signs and symbols key from my website is because it shows all of the astrological symbols so you can decode them in the birth chart. What I actually recommend doing is printing out your chart and then in the margins next to each symbol, if you're not already familiar with the astrological symbolism, write in what those um, symbols actually represent in terms of the planets and the zodiac signs. Um, so you're going to see on the outer circle here, there's a whole um, there's a whole zodiac. And so the outer circle is actually showing you the, um, the zodiac signs. So you have Aries all the way through Pisces there in those different colors. Um, on astro.com, the red represents the fire signs. The uh, yellow represents the air signs. The green represents the earth signs. And the blue represents the water signs. And so these are going to be the different elements in astrology. Um, when you're looking at the kind of inner circle and those slices of pie, they're numbered there. And so you see that you have um, the houses numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And so that's where you can see the 12 houses to determine in which house each of your planets will fall. Um, the AC over on the left-hand side represents your ascendant or your rising sign. And so one of the first things that I recommend that you do is look at where the ascendant is placed and what that symbol represents and look into the energy of your rising sign and decode what that means. The rising sign represents basically your personality or persona, the way that you show up in the world, and the way that you've been conditioned to show up in the world based on your early childhood experience. It represents your goal your orientation in life, major life themes. It represents your physical body and your physical appearance even. And so the first house and the ascendant is a very prominent energy when it comes to everything that you engage with in this lifetime, in this reality. And it's a big part of who you are as a person. So that's going to be a big key thing to look at. So a lot of people talk about their sun signs and most people know their sun sign because it's easier to figure out because it's a 30 day segment of time roughly. Um, whereas the rising sign changes hour by hour. And so I highly recommend looking at that first. Then look at where your sun is placed, right? So the sun, you can see in this little 
glyph and signs and symbols key, it's a circle with a dot in the center. So figure out where that circle with the dot in the center is located in terms of the sign, and then um, also in terms of the house that it's in. This is going to show you a lot about who you are more at a core level, at a soul level. The sun represents the soul's expression of purpose in the physical reality. It's who you are, and it's the way that your soul wants to express, express itself it's, and show up in this physical reality. It's what your soul needs in order to feel lit up, vital, successful, engaged with life. And this connection from the energy of the sun sign can lead to melancholy, depression, lack of energy, lack of drive, lack of motivation. And so you want to make sure that you understand your sun sign and that you're embracing that energy and that you're okay with who you are and what this represents and that you're incorporating this energy into your day-to-day -day reality. So the sun sign is hugely important as well. Finally, um, the third thing that would be really important to look at is the moon sign. So these are the big three that astrologers often talk about and that I often talk about in my forecasts um, that people always ask you about when they know that you're interested in astrology. And so the moon um, is obviously, it's represented by a little crescent moon, pretty easy to figure out. And so you want to see where the moon is showing up in the sign and in the house. And then you're going to want to use your reference guide to get those interpretations there. That's just very basic level. And so you can go through and do that for each of your planets and then go through to your reference guide and figure out what that planet means in each sign or in each house. This is something that I teach when it comes to foundational astrology in my foundational astrology course for beginners so that way you can figure out how to do these interpretations more on your own without using the guide. But I always recommend playing with, um, you know, utilizing a book or a reference guide and doing some uh, some research on your own and some DIY self study. And so that's where you're going to, what you're going to be doing here. The other thing that I want you guys to make note of so, all of those symbols on the inner circle, those are all of your planets. The planets represent sort of the actions. So this is what is happening or how you're showing up in the world or how you're engaging with the world in one way or another. The personal planets are referencing the sun, moon, Mercury, Venus, and Mars, the inner planets in astrology, as well as the luminaries, which are the sun and the moon. These are going to be the most prominent energies when it comes to your personality and the way that you show up in the world. So these are going to be the most important for you to look into and figure out what sign they're in. Um, you know, we talked about the sun and the moon, but Mercury represents your intellect. It represents your knowledge and the way that you learn and the way that you communicate and share knowledge with other people. Um, when you look at Mars, Mars represents your action, your willpower, um, the way that you act on your own volition and initiate different projects, activities, tasks, things like that. It also represents visceral emotional responses like anger, right? Uh, rage, hatred. Um, you know, it's an energy that can be quite divisive in a lot of ways. And then Venus is the opposite of that. So while Mars has this energy of separation, potentially, um, it's what separates you from everyone else, right? Mars is like the will. It's you as an individual and the way that you make your mark on the world through taking action. Venus is more how you come together and interrelate with other people. It's your love language. And I actually have videos on your Mercury, Venus, and Mars sign that I've already done for you on my channel. I'm going to post links to those down in the description below so you can find your signs and have a really good um, you know, interpretation of the planetary energy in those signs. Uh, so those are going to be really important to look at as well. The outer planets are more interpersonal and transformational. So they represent um, more how you engage with bigger, broader life themes, um, how you engage with other people, other cultures, other societies, how you engage on more of a psychological level or a transpersonal level. And those are going to be more generational when it comes to their sign influence. And so especially after you get past Mars, you're going to want to pay very close attention to the house that these planets show up in because that's what's going to be more unique to you. An example would be like um, Uranus. Uranus transits a sign for 
roughly eight years. And so everyone born within eight years of you is going to have the same Uranus sign. What makes your Uranus placement unique is going to be um, not only the house placement that's very important, but also the planetary aspects, which is the next thing that we're going to look at here in this birth chart interpretation. And so um, you can see in the chart here that there's a lot of different lines going through the chart in the center, and those lines are connecting different planets to one another. These are uh, known as aspects or angles, and they represent different ang angles or different um, relationships between two planets. And so the blue lines, if you're using the chart from astro.com, are going to represent harmonious aspects. These are the trines and the sextiles. Trines are going to be the longer blue lines, and these are... Are, um, these are more positive, more harmonious aspects that tend to flow with a lot of ease to the point where you might not even appreciate the fact that you have an easier time in this area because it's just coming very naturally to you. It's something that is a talent or a gift or a benefit that you came in with in this lifetime. Sextiles are a little bit different. Those are going to be a little bit shorter. Um, and those are going to be sort of the short blue lines in the chart. And so you can see in Johnny Depp's chart, who's, that's whose chart I have pulled up here, that he has Mars in a sextile with Neptune. So Mars, um, you can see on the symbols in uh, science key, and Neptune you can see on the symbols in science key. He has Mars in the sign of Virgo and Neptune in the sign of um, of Scorpio, and that short blue line there in between those two planets represents a sextile. Sextiles are energies that are um, a little bit different than the trines. The trines are more harmonious in a way that you don't have to act on them. Sextiles you have to activate. And so the benefits might be more subtle or you might have to actually do something in order to um, create a situation in which the sextile and the benefits of the sextile can really unfold and be utilized in this lifetime. And so the sextiles are um, also considered major planetary aspects and they're harmonious. The red lines actually represent um, disharmonious or challenging aspects in the, birth chart, in the birth chart, but not every red line that you see on astro.com is always going to be um, challenging. And so, but the squares will be. So the short red lines are called squares, and these are very challenging aspects. This is where two planets are working almost, not necessarily against each other, but there's friction between these two energies and they're not working in harmony. And so the more negative attributes of these planets can be expressed in combination with one another. And so this represents an area of challenge, friction, difficulty, where you have to work harder to overcome this energy or where you might succumb to these negative patterns of doing things in the same way where it doesn't work out or it works against you in this lifetime. That something that you have to learn to work on and work through. The um, longer red lines are actually oppositions. Oppositions are not always disharmonious. And so oppositions literally represent a an, an literal opposition, or they can represent a literal opposition between two energies or two areas of your life, um, or you know, two different qualities in your personality. But they don't necessarily always have to be negative. Um, the quality of the opposition is going to depend on the planets involved. And so if you have Venus or Jupiter, which are the benefit planets in an opposition, those are going to be much more harmonious and much more beneficial. When you have Mars and Saturn in an opposition, which are the malefic planets, those are going to be more disharmonious and more challenging when it comes to the opposition. And so that's where you're going to get these like opposing energies that are conflicting with one another. Uh, finally, conjunctions. So conjunctions are also represented in red when they're far enough apart for you to see the red line, um, but they're not always disharmonious. It's kind of the similar thing but uh, to the oppositions, but uh, a conjunction is basically a, com a combining of two energies. It's very hard to pull these energies apart or pick them apart. They're kind of working together as one unit in a lot of ways, especially when those conjunctions, when those planets are located very close together in the chart. And so again, kind of in the same token as the opposition, um, benefic planets like Venus or Jupiter can indicate that this is actually a really good thing and a positive quality to have. And malefic planets like uh, Saturn or Mars can indicate that this is more challenging um, in terms of the way that this shows up. 
And so you're going to have to consider that um, as part of the interpretation as well. But once you figure out, so another thing that I recommend that you do, because you printed out your chart, right, and you wrote down all the different glyphs, um, I recommend that you write down next to each of the aspects what it actually represents. And um, so that way you have the conjunction, opposition, trine, and the aspects in this glyph key are the aspects in the aspect table. Um, you don't necessarily have to worry about that right now, but that's how those aspects Aspects show up when they're not in a chart they're represented by those symbols right there um, and so that's basically what you what you're gonna be looking at here so you're gonna want to start with the Sun Moon and rising and then go out from there right Sun Moon and rising and then Mercury Venus Mars and then go out to the outer planets and um, and start to interpret those and another thing that I recommend that you do is to write it down or to keep a journal so this is going to be a process you're probably not going to read your chart or interpret every configuration in your chart all at once but what would be awesome to do is to either you know get a book like this and highlight the configurations in like the only astrology book you'll ever need or another reference guide of your choice highlight the configurations that are relevant to you and your chart so that way you know what to go back and read and reference into the future as you go through and continue to decode your chart because there are so many layers here right and so you're starting with the planets and the signs and then the planets and the houses and then you're starting to look at how the planets are interrelating between one another and that's going to be a big part of this as well. And so those are my tips for doing a DIY astrology reading and really getting in there and picking apart your birth chart. This is something that, again, it's going to be a process. You're going to have to work on it and work through it and get through all of those layers. But once you do, you're going to have a better understanding of yourself. You're going to have a better understanding of astrology and how it works. And you're going to be well on your way to learning how to become your own astrologer or maybe even the astrologer for your friends and family when they have questions about what's going on astrologically. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye everyone.